God morning in the cool of the day where everything becomes a word from God. What did I say? Oh, where everyday things become a word from God. A word from God becomes an everyday thing. I'm tilling up the ground. It's tilled, actually. I've done it. Uh, and then we're going to transplant these barely surviving plants from this eight inches of soil I put in there. The rest is those uh, gumballs that fall from this tree and the leaves that came up from under this tree right here. And then there's eight inches of soil. And they've been struggling all summer. They produce fruit, but very little. Uh, we're going to transplant them. Uh, we're going to consider these Christians, but uh, Christians without m much root. Uh, and we're going to transplant them into good soil and show you what soil that's mixed with fertilizer and that's got um, potting soil and stuff mixed in with it, um, barnyard um, compost, and um, I didn't mix the chicken compost in there yet, but um, it's all mixed in that soil, and we're going to transplant this stuff into there. Also, grow uh, put our uh, our juice fasting. Uh, vegetables that I uh, me and Fru back I was in 2011 when I watched Fat Sick and Dying she watched it around that time too uh, both of us ended up with the same brand name Breville juicers from that movie uh, we both did the fast we both, both received miracles from it and it changed our lives and here we are today now we're planting that's over, let's see 2011 when I did that that's over 11 years ago um, and now we're planting our own vegetables to make our own juice that healed us from way back then. So um, we're experiencing more and more miracles out here. I, t I told everyone a couple years ago that I had a miracle garden that God gave me. And that's, that's what I'm doing right here. Just just didn't see it then. It's Maybe you can't see it now. Uh, I guess it all depends on what you see. You know, I always used to think when you look, well, I, I, I saw things different than everyone else. I literally, from the time I was a kid, I'm like, oh, really? I'm glad y'all show me what an elephant is, because the way y'all see stuff, I might pick something else out to be an elephant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I'm just different. It ain't y'all. Well, yeah, it is. All of y'all see things a certain way. I'm blessed to see things the way I do. I'm glad that Watch this. I am glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How's that? That's much better. I don't like it. Thank you. Ha ha. So these are my work clothes. I also um, also will make a God morning out with them on. My wife says, Why sometimes are you dressed normal and then sometimes you're in your work clothes? And I say, Because I'm working. I'm wicked. Sometimes I don't have to get out and get on the in the sweat in here in Mississippi. Sometimes I get to get up, dress clean. Um, but it don't matter to me either way. I'm out here living, and uh, I really enjoy where we live at. Um, I want to leave this a uh, little different of a God morning with you. Um, I want to encourage. Some prodigals that are out there, uh, so far away from all your like spiritual family and the people that you grew up with, and and the way they live, the lifestyle, all the man, the difference in the world and in the church. Yeah, the church can be full of a bunch of hypocrites. Yes, the church can be backbiting and stabbing and all these things that us prodigals know about the church that we like to use in, as an excuse to not go. Hey, listen. I've been out there and I was in it for 20 something years. You know what, I, I don't mind. I just don't mind being surrounded by people who love God, who appreciate how I worship. Um, 
who also are striving to get to become a better human. Whether we look alike or act alike, we've all gone through the same uh, the same era of time together. The prodigals uh, that are out there watching right now, listen, it's like this, you got kidnapped. There was a whole war, a civil war that was going on and, and us that, from this generation that suffered some of the, the scars from it, we just walked away from church because we didn't want to be a part of that. Um, but you know what, those that, those that lasted are love us and they, they, they want you back. They want you back. It's not um, bragging rights, it's, it's they love you, you're connected. You know, I, I, I had all this time over 800, and it started this way, 800 Facebook friends who were all ALJC. Isn't that something? Um, a whole family of, of friends that I grew up with that knew me and knew, knew know what I believed, know how I was raised, understand all of the, the conflict, understand the joy, under, I mean, the Holy Ghost, all that stuff. That's cool to have that many people. Um, but I wasn't, you know, connected with them in any way. I couldn't hardly really discuss anything with them because of my view, my perception of them and their perception of me. Um, and now that I've come full circle, it's been four years now, um, perception, uh, God helped me have a different perception and also helped the church have a different perception. And it's the longer we're loving each other, the more we're around each other, the greater that perception God begins to heal and it's healing blindness and that's caused uh, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples that you have loved one for another so here's what I want you prodigals to do know that the church loves you the people you were grown up around the pastors the pastor's family all of those folks that you hung out they love you they're not concerned with uh, all the sin you've committed, they're, they're concerned with you coming back and, and worshiping God with them and having a testimony to share of God's grace and mercy, like as a mine. And it, you know, the way it helped me, my wife, um, I had a really, really bad view of religion and, and my culture. That's how my wife healed it. She said, David, won't you just look at it? I look at it as a different culture. It's inside of America. Um, yeah, your American culture and Hungarian culture are two different things, but inside of American culture, there's different cultures, which are what religions are like to her. And when she explained that to me, I began to appreciate where I came from, um, understanding where I came from. I mean, like uh, where I come from has some serious, serious godliness in it. You know what I mean? I didn't like, ooh, you better walk right and spit white. Um, my grandpa preached hard against tobacco and, and alcohol, which were the substance of that day, um, and how it was a lie. It would kill you. Uh, television, it was brand new, coming out. He preached against it. Look at what we were letting into our homes. Now we all have these... The book of Proverbs says they were all filled with their own devices. Um, anyway, so the word of God's being fulfilled, and, and um, I like uh, I like how God has turned my life and how He's opening His arms up like this. All you prodigals, look at me. It's David Carson here. Come home, come home. That just reminds me. I'm gonna go get my guitar. Hold up. Very special moment. And I'm back. So the prodigals, um, it's not something that like you want to be proud of. It's like, woo, prodigal, man, I don't want to be the prodigal. Shh, shh, shh. You're fulfilling the word of God. If you allow this to, to uh, sink in, it's a privilege to fulfill the word of God. Someone has to do it. It was you. Now rejoice in the fact that your father is the prodigal. He's lavish with grace, mercy, throws a robe on your shoulders, puts a ring on your finger, kills the catted fat, fat, catted fat, kills the fatted calf. Calf. Anyhow, that's hard to say. 
um, why don't I just say he kills the big calf, you know, the nice one, the one saved up for a big roast. That's our daddy. And you know what? He's our heavenly father, our best friend. One's ever been where this man has been. He never lets go. Oh, Jesus, he never lets go. How far or long? He never lets go oh, Jesus He never lets go Ha ha Come home Says Jesus It's time to come home No matter how far Or long it's your hand on the Father's head, cause he never lets go, no Jesus, he never lets go, come home, says Jesus, it's time to come all right, prodigals, you're part of this uh, fulfillment of the word here at the end. I believe it's a big old tribe of Judah worshiping God that brings, you know, how the, the Lord of hosts, that's Jesus, you know. He came down from the heavens and he destroyed the children of Israel's enemies in, right in front of their eyes because the tribe of Judah was out there worshiping. And I, I kind of see them like um, oh, Braveheart, you know, where uh, Mel Gibson played in that movie. Um and uh, the, the Irish and Scottish, they, are, they were fighting, and, and old boys come out there and pulled their kilts up, mooned, mooned them like, <laughs> they were psycho. I mean, they were getting the arrows in their hind end and stuff. The tribe of Judah would go out before the armies, like 10,000 of them, all right? There's 100,000, oh man, he's got a big old full army over here. It's the tribe of Judah come marching out there with harps, trumpets, his mercy endures forever. Yeah, yeah. His mercy endures forever. Ah, ah, his mercy. You see it? Are you getting it? You see? Tribe of Judah praise. It takes somebody who's been saved from the pits of hell to not, you know, have that kind of, woo, he fights my battles. Woo, woo. And when I, sometimes when I'm like overwhelmed with battle, I'm just praising him psychotically because I remember where I was like four years ago. I'm like, wow. The second coming of Christ, I mean the Lord of hosts appearing in the clouds. I'm just saying you're part of a fulfillment. You're a, uh, a, 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 a remnant. Get off your prodigal hind end and start running home because your daddy's waiting for you. There's a party to have. Um, uh, and here's another thing. You're fulfilling the word of God. So you don't have to remain this prodigal story. You come running home, poof, and just like I'm standing here before you right now, hustling, shepherding, the prodigals, come on home, come on home. Um, that's fulfillment of uh, Ezekiel chapter 30. The good shepherd. See, where God brought me from, I can go right back. I know exactly how they feel. You feel. I know exactly what you're battling with all the addictions and stuff that you tried to, you know, replace this Holy Ghost comfort with to help yourself feel better through this time of what in the heck is it are we doing? Um, and here we are. I'm here with you. I did it. Four years, boys and girls. Now come on in. Come on home. Jesus is calling the army, the tribe of Judah. I need some praise warriors, praise warriors, so we can call down the power from heaven. All right. Lift up holy hands. That's a 15-minute, 
15 minute God morning. I'm calling the prodigals in and I'm calling the prodigals to come in and be the tribe of Judah with me. I need some psychotic praise and unity. I believe that if what I experience in worship, I can get others to, which are just bring some prodigals in that, you know, need some deliverance, that's been delivered, then gets loved, like hadn't felt any love. All that stuff just makes you dance. Now, I need some of these, because I have this feeling that if there's more of this, that the clouds whew, open up and fire from above starts to fill the place where we're sitting. You know what I'm talking about? Where they're sitting. Let's call down the fire from heaven. How they did it in the Old Testament is mercy endure forever. Man, I know all about his mercy. I'm so glad that I didn't get the things that I deserved getting. Showed me mercy. And instead, he filled me with grace. Gave me all the stuff that I don't deserve. This is the garden I've been talking about for decades. Good Lord, he's good to me. And I was a sinner. Lost and undone. God morning. There's hope in Jesus. Up, oh, I'm gonna leave soon. One more song. See you one more song. See how that happened? Uh, because this is my show, I can do as I please. Is that in two? No. Now, all right, here we go. I've been held by the Savior. This is David Crowder. I've been down to the river. Yes, I have. I ain't the same. I'm a prodigal return. That's why I sing all. My hope is in Jesus. I thank God. My yesterdays are gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. Yes, they are. I've been washed, been washed by the blood. Now, see these shackles? See these shackles? See that? Unshackled, man. Popped right off my wrist. I'm no stranger to the prison. I've been locked up, man. I've worn shackles and chains, yeah. But I've been freed and delivered. Yes, I have. I ain't going back. I'll never be the same. Ha <laughs> ha. That's why I sing all <laughs> my hope is in Jesus. I thank God my yesterdays are gone. All my sins are forgiven. Yes, they are. I've been washed, been washed by the blood. There's a kind of thing, yeah, just breaks a man. Break him down to his knees. Lord knows I've been broken a time or two, yes I have. But he picked me up and showed me what it means to be a man. And that's why I sing all. My hope is in Jesus. I thank God my yesterdays are gone. All your sins have been forgiven. Yes, they have. You've been washed. Come get washed. Been washed in the blood. Woo! Go get washed. Washed in the blood. Hey, I'd like to tell you guys a little something. These prodigals, you may not know this. I didn't know this. And this may, you know, 
you might get uh, a different response from your spiritual father. I'm not sure, but guess what? My spiritual daddy and my physical daddy, he recommended me get baptized again after all that sin I was living in for so long. And guess what? Woo! I'm so glad I did. I went down in that water and I came up and I'm like, that's what all those folks were excited about. I got baptized so young, I forgot what that felt like. Or it was so long ago, or I hit my head so long. Nah, I didn't have much sin when I was four. I got the Holy Ghost. So they said, well, I might as well baptize him. I don't remember it. Um, so I got baptized again, and whoo! I mean, this stuff works. It's powerful. It's like shedding of weighted it. Um, and that's what Buried Man Festival is going to be about. Shh, don't tell anyone. But, uh baptizing folks removal of the past PTSD washed clean man um, I, I'm all about knocking the legion or suicide out and um, prodigals I'm, I'm glad that it's it's here I'm t I'm so uh, I was so exhausted from waiting um, I have no patience, really, and I thought patience was for dumb people and then, or ignorant people. You know, you got to have patience for dummies. Uh, you got to. I drive you nuts. Um, okay. <clears throat> Focus. We are at 21 minutes. All right. Um, listen, this was a, a good God morning off the cuff. I want you all to want y'all to get used to me not bringing out a Bible and, and, and uh, you know, the traditional way of ministering because the church can do that all day long. I need to reach people that won't, that will not, you know, find themselves plop down where a Bible's open. So uh, my life is, is living fulfillment of the word, and it is word from God all this around me. Is. This this was a vision, a word from God he gave to me long ago, and it's fulfillment. And uh, he's given me lesson after lesson by just watching how nature works. You know, that's God back there. He did this. A for sure thing when you put a seed in the ground that you're going to get that seed. It's not going to produce a whale, cricket. Corn ain't going to reproduce an apple tree or a vampire. It's not a gamble. Sure thing. And that's what God is. God is a sure thing. Everything else that's iffies of the devil, it's darkness. It is a waste of your time um, and energy. Put your energy on something that's eternal. Uh, being a person that chases and seeks after God, if you get into this covenant with him, which is, it's, it's a promise, it's a partnership with him. And if you will get yourself into this, your blessings upon your life, your businesses, your family, I mean, it goes generations deep, y'all. This is, a, instead of generational curses, we get generational blessings. It's a heritage. And I, uh, I'm proud of my heritage, and I'm excited to share it with my kids. Um, I'm excited that the way I raised my kids was completely different than the way I was raised, and that the Word of God still sticks. It doesn't matter. It comes from the heart when you have a when you have a heart that seeks after God. This is what happens. This is the blessings. This is what God the the day. does with your life. He makes it clear that He is blessing you. He makes it clear that you are His child. He makes it clear that you're full of peace and joy. He makes it clear that you you have a relationship with Him, and that's the testimony. So uh, come on in, prodigals. Come get you loving. Come get your daddy loves you. Daddy loves you, I'm telling you. Um, yeah. <sighs> He's been good to me. Y'all have a wonderful day. God morning. See you next shift of next week.